In this video, we're going to take a look at the scenario editor as well as the first steps you should take whenever you're creating a new scenario. First things first, now the scenario editor is accessed in a couple of different ways. The first way is if you're at the main menu, you can click on create new scenario. Or alternatively, if you go up to the top and click on file, you have the ability to go ahead and create a new blank scenario. When you do this, of course, it's going to ask you whether or not you actually wanted to make this decision. In this case, we haven't done anything, so I'm going to press the OK button. Once you're here, you're basically going to be presented with the whole globe with uh, no units on it, no sides, no code, no nothing. So the first thing we usually do when we're going to be developing a scenario is we want to make sure we go ahead and establish what database we intend to use for the scenario. Keep in mind, once you've developed a database for a scenario, going back and using previous databases can be challenging if the particular unit or particular loadout does not exist in that other database. Keep in mind, as other features are also introduced to command, the previous databases may not work properly. So let's go ahead and do that first. I'm going to go up to Editor. I'm going to go down to database, and I'm going to make sure the database is the one that we want. In this case, I want to use the latest database 3000. If I wanted to use an alternate database, I could simply click right here and open up the appropriate file. Once we selected our database, uh, the next step usually is to go ahead and establish the time and general length of our scenario. So we're going to go up to scenario times and duration, and we can simply establish it. For example, if we wanted to create a scenario uh, right on uh, of January 1st of 2000, we could simply go through here and go ahead and establish everything from daylight savings times to the length of our particular scenario. In this case, uh, we'll go ahead and say uh, 930, keep it nice and simple. And we'll also go ahead and copy the current time to the starting time. Keep in mind, if you run into a situation where the current time exceeds the starting time by the length of the scenario, the scenario will never work. So in this particular case, it's going to be a very, very simple little scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and make this, uh, let's say, 2 hours and 30 minutes long. Our next item is the complexity and difficulty. This is simply a graphical reminder to tell you how difficult the scenario is, as well as how many units are in the scenario. Generally, with complexity, any scenario that is greater than 1,000 units is going to be complexity 5, although you can certainly set this to whatever you want. It has no impact on the actual gameplay itself. Down here, you can go ahead and say location or setting. So for example, I can say North Atlantic for my little example here. And now we'll go ahead and establish that as being something that we can see when we click on the scenario. I'm now going to press the OK button. As soon as we've done that, you'll notice at the top, it has automatically populated everything on the top of the screen with what day it is, what time it is. It has the Zulu time, of course. And you'll notice if I rotate the map here, we can see that the time of day starts to change. Also notice we can see our altitude as well as how much time we have left in the scenario. Keep in mind, whenever you're working with scenarios, it's highly recommended to save multiple copies of it. So I'm actually going to come right up here. I'm going to go ahead and press OK because we have not yet created a side. To create a side, simply click on Editor, click on Add and Edit Sides, then click on the Add button. So in our case, we're going to keep this uh, nice and simple. We're going to have uh, Team Green. And we're going to go ahead and add a second one that's going to be Team Orange. And we'll go ahead and add uh, Team Purple as well. I'm going to go ahead and press the OK button there. Now, when you've uh, named your sides, each one of these sides has unique properties at their disposal. They have a just separate briefing. Uh, find the enemy submarine. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and make a Team Orange, uh, we'll go up to this one, edit their briefing, sync the convoy. And Team Purple, let's call them, uh, they're probably going to be our civilian sides, so uh, go fishing. That sounds like a good combination to me. And now we have our different sides. After you've established the names of your sides, you can then establish a bunch more properties down here. For example, I know in this particular scenario, we're going to have the ability to play as either green or orange. Purple on the flip side, we're not going to be able to play as because they're going to be a civil side. So I'm simply going to come down here and set them to computer only. It is also highly recommended that whenever you have a side that does not need to be doing any sort of sensing or detecting, to go ahead and take their awareness level and set it to the blind level. You can also set the proficiency to novice should you choose to do so. Now, in this particular situation, uh, we have the ability to actually establish set colors for our different sides. In this case, I'm actually going to click Fix Color, I'm going to click on Change Color, and we'll go ahead and make the purple side actually purple, just to make things interesting. Our orange side, we're going to go ahead and set them as a fixed color, and we'll go ahead and make them actually orange. And then our green side, we'll go ahead and establish them to be green as well. Keep in mind, when you establish these colors, that they're going to be set as long as they know them. The other colors, such as the yellow ones, will show up as a yellow color, just to indicate that you're dealing with an unknown side. So you may wish to avoid that color. The next thing we're going to take a look at is what collective responsibility is. Collective responsibility gives us the ability to go ahead and establish that any action taken by that side is re representative of that entire side. So in the event that it accidentally fired a torpedo and sunk a civilian vessel, if collective responsibility is on, the entire civilian side would declare war on us versus just attacking that one unit. The next item you have is can track civilians. Uh, this gives you the ability to automatically detect any sort of craft that is a civilian slash commercial that has the ability to announce this particular position. Let's assume, for example, that our green team has the ability to track civilians, and we'll assume that orange team does not have the ability to track it. 
Underneath that, we have the awareness level. This allows us to establish, is the side blind, in which case there are no radar no vision calculations? Is it normal? Is it representing the real world? Is it auto side ID? This simply means that you can go ahead and see the unit using conventional techniques, whether it be visual or radar. However, it'll automatically identify what team it's on. Now, this is really, really useful if you're simulating things such as IFF. Below that, you have both auto side and auto unit ID, meaning any unit that is identified by any means can automatically be identified by side as well as what type of unit it is. And the last option, this one's very, very tricky, except for testing purposes, is omniscient. And this simply says that you can see everything at all times and know exactly where everyone is. Keep in mind, just because you can see everyone does not mean you can necessarily engage everyone. Uh, you can create some very interesting scenarios with an omniscient perspective. All right, now that our sides are established, let's go ahead and set up our initial postures. So green team, we're going to assume is of not friendly to our orange team. And we're going to assume they're neutral to purple team. Our orange team here, we're going to go ahead and establish them so they are not friendly to green team, but they are neutral to purple team. Now, purple team, of course, has been established as being neutral to everybody by default. The next item we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our rules of engagement. So under my green team here, my doctrine rules of engagement, we're going to assume it's a fairly simple, pretty straightforward one. The only thing we're going to do different here is just going to make it so that we can use our surface to air surface weapons. We're going to make sure that um, they're going to go ahead and not avoid contact should they need to. We're also going to go ahead and establish this. All these other options will look pretty good. I'm not going to change anything else here. On the purple side, we're going to assume they have a slightly different doctrine. Uh, they're basically, they're the team of just shoot the first thing we see, no matter what the consequences are. We'll go ahead and make them a very, very optimistic and basically go to town on anything they see that they're not able to immediately identify. This should create some interesting little problems for us uh, later on. But again, this is a great way to simulate you know, the impacts of doctrine. Meanwhile, a purple team, since they can't see anything and they have absolutely no proficiency, they're just going to be kind of tooling around just for those purposes directly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a look at our proficiency. So basically the way to think about proficiency is it's going to change the way that the UDA cycle is run, it's going to change how low you can fly, and it's going to change a couple other time-based things as well as how much performance you can get out of like an airplane, for example. Generally the novice is we just got out of the academy. Generally, uh, cadet is uh, we've not gotten out of the academy, we've had a couple years of experience, maybe some big training exercises, but we've never seen live fire before. Our regular proficiency basically says, yes, you've gotten some proper training, uh, you've been keeping on top of things, you probably have a little tiny bit of combat experience. A veteran unit is going to represent a side that has significant combat experience. You know, this is a year three of a pretty long war. And then finally, ace simply refers to a particular side or particular unit of proficiency that represents the highest achievement both as far as being able to engage targets quickly as well as to get every little ounce of performance out of a particular aircraft. Keep in mind, proficiency can be set by side or by unit. So for example, our green, we're going to assume this is the end of the opening ways, and we're just going to say it's cadet. Orange team, or we're going to assume that we have a bunch of uh, basically novices, maybe people who are a little bit new to the controls. And purple team, we don't even need to bother setting their particular proficiency here because it doesn't matter because they're not even going to be looking or doing any sort of combat actions. Now that that's taken care of and out of the way, we're going to go ahead and save our scenario. I'm going to press save as. We'll go ahead and call this one example two just for today. I'm going to press the OK button here. We're going to go ahead and save that to my scenario folder. And now we're ready to start working on the scenario itself. So the next thing I like to do is I like to establish the weather for a particular scenario. Since so we're going to be operating up here in the North Atlantic today, we can always check some charts and kind of decide. If uh, we're looking at January 1st, the weather is probably going to be pretty miserable. So I'm going to go up to Editor. I'm going to go down to Weather. Keep in mind, weather can be changed dynamically using Lua. By holding my mouse over the screen, I can see right now we're at a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, which uh, that seems a little warm. I'm actually going to reduce that to about minus 5 or so. We're going to assume that the sky is uh, pretty nasty. So let's see here. Um, we're looking at clouds that are 20 25 to 20,000 feet. I'm actually going to bring them a little bit lower. Let's see, uh, 7 to 16,000 feet. That sounds pretty good. And of course, so we're in the Atlantic during the winter. It's going to be pretty darn windy. So let's see, we're at a wind sea state of 3. I'll actually put the wind sea state up at the 4. Minus 5. Uh, we'll make just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of uh, drifting rain there. Let's take a look. Very light rain. Yeah, we'll make it just a little bit worse. There we go. Now that's the North Atlantic. Okay, so the weather has been established well. We've set up our database. We've gone ahead and set up our times. It's a good idea to go ahead and set up your title and description. You can edit your briefing. You can edit your scoring. Anything else you need to do at this particular time. Another common thing that I do in the beginning of all my scenarios is I start setting up any sort of exclusion zones. So for example, if uh, we know that the green player is not supposed to be operating anywhere inside of Iceland, we could actually come in here and define any sort of area that we need. So let's say, again, we're just doing a rough kind of shape here. We'll go ahead and set up the mission and ref points. We'll go ahead and say no navigation. We'll create a new one. We'll go ahead and call this one Iceland. And we're going to make them visible, and we're going to make them uneditable. I'm going to press save and close. So now we basically put Iceland completely off limits to that particular green player. That's generally the next step. 
As far as adding at units, editing units and things along those lines, we'll take a look at that in our next video.